Hey guys, welcome back to JLEG3. So we had a question come up as how do I do coils like for an engine, uh, electric engine, for example. So uh, I covered the topic in other videos that were similar, but uh, specifically for coils, let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm going to make a round coil first and then the square coil. The process is the same, but slightly different. So uh, let's go ahead and make this 10 just off the bat to make it easier to count. And we need to actually extrude this so we have a reference. So let's make this 10 millimeters in height as well. And we're going to go to the front view, click that right uh, square on the right top there. And we're going to go down here and draw a circle. So we're just going to make it one millimeter uh, for easier reference, but I don't know how thick your wire gauge is supposed to be. It depends on your needs. So just know what you need and then follow along this process, right? So what we can do now is we actually need to make a sketch that goes around the cylinder but it needs to be kind of uh, slightly curved, right? Because it's going up in a spiral. So what we can do is if we double click that circle, we draw a line across here and we extrude this bottom here. We can use this now as a plane. So instead of using the bottom plane where it would be like in the halfway here, we start from the very you know, top and then it could be twisted into here as necessary. But uh, double click that plane there and then we can either draw an arc, which is harder to align, or we could just do the circle right from the center to the mid plane here. And what we need to do is trim, uh, trim half of the circle. So we need to draw a line here and then trim. First of all, uh, let's do this one because that will get in the way. And then this piece right here. So now we have that half circle and now we can delete this whole piece. We don't need it anymore since we've already used it for our plane. What we need to do now is transform and move and we select this circle and make sure to align our pivot point right there as we rotate it up by however much you want your spiral to run. So in this case, let's do 2.5 degrees. So we have a pretty nice spiral there. And what we need to do now is tools and sweep this circle and make sure you select both halves, click next, and then use that line as the reference point. Okay. And now click done and in my very, very, very old video, before we had the pattern tool, I told you to sketch the whole process and manually keep, you know, turning, turning the sketches up and up and then keep on sweeping. So this would be like a whole big process, but now we can do a simpler version of that. So you select your piece by double clicking it, and then you move this to the center, click copy, rotate this by 180 degrees. And if you mess up, just write it down and then you, pick it up by however much is needed. So I forgot to undo the copy function. So we'll have to delete the other piece. So let me redo it so you guys <laughs> get it uh, perfect the first time. Basically, select the piece, you copy it, rotate it by 180, deselect copy, and then you move it up. It was 0.5, I believe. So now that we have part of our coil going, what we can now do is transform pattern select these two pieces, make sure your pattern is linear, then align it at the center just in case, because sometimes it misaligns. And then make sure spacing is on instead of total distance because we want spacing. Remember we had that 0.5 spacing. So make it one because we have two pieces. So it multiplies by two. And then you add however many pieces you want for your coil. So this is the easiest way to make the coil currently. And to make your life easier uh, to understand it better in, in a sense. Let's go ahead and just pretend that's some kind of metal. And then for our items, for a linear pattern, we can choose some kind of brassy color, right? Just for reference. So once we go here, we can see there's a, let's say this is a copper wire going around its stem, right? And then for the square coil, basically same process. The only difference would be that we have a different shape, right? So if you sketch a rectangle, make sure it's on center, go to top view, we have our rectangle, and usually it's rounded. But for this, let's go ahead and just uh, put this up by 10. And then round the corners. Now this is easier than having to sketch every corner manually, that takes a lot more effort than, than this. And then if you want the sketch for your forms, uh, either way, this is still easier because watch if I go ahead and select that and then I tools project on the top plane here. Well, we need to select that little square now. 
versus before but we'll go ahead and project sketches because we're not doing it on the body and then we hide our body you can see i projected those sketches and the work was way easier than me having to go in draw draw circles and doing tangent uh, to all those pieces right so this is a lot less work uh, otherwise but anyways let's go back and we don't need that sketch so i undid that but let's go ahead and now draw an offset so tools offset which is also another way to do it because you could do this and then offset it back but we offset it by one millimeter and then just like before we need to go to the top view and then draw a line here and trim the excess parts because we need to rotate that so it kind of goes up and we can technically go an extra step and cut this away so that it rotates even more but i think this will be enough if i'm not mistaken so let's go ahead and top view and again this is a repeat of the last process but just so that you have something to follow along if you need it and we rotate this by 90 degrees and then tools and there's also one thing I, I could uh, mention that you can either do the revolving of the line or you can tools sweep and then move the object. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but let's go ahead and try it just for experimentation. If we transform move this part, see it moves that. So we might have to select these edges as well. And it does work to a certain degree. Let's go back just one more time so we can select that piece as well. And as you can see, it does sort of work, but not as well as we want it. So, so we do actually, in this case, have to move the line. So let's go ahead and uh, transform move, select our lines. And we're going to align it here as needed and move that up by, let's do 2.5 again. I don't know if this is perfect, but uh also as you can see i did it here in the center this time which is goes below but we can just either move this or or extrude it down but tools sweep select the circle and then see uh, the reason why i didn't want you to sweep before and i use the pattern tool instead is because for every sketch that changes you basically have to click it again and again and this will slow down your process. But if you just use the pattern tool, it makes it so much quicker. And as you can see, this actually follows the curve without having like weird situations. So this would be like a perfect situation. And then we double click it, click copy. This one's a bit harder to align actually. So what we can do is align it manually or we can sketch a circle, which makes our job easier because it auto aligns, right? So then we, as you can see, you come to the closer edge of the circle, it just goes directly to the center. So copy, move it over by 180, then go up. Uh, let's see, I forgot to uncopy again, but we'll just delete it in this time. So as you can see, this is a bit off because the revolution is different. So let me show you how to fix that. First of all, uh, let's go back properly and show you how to do that. So move, rotate copy revolve by 180 then deselect copy before you move up right so as you can see one millimeter all right let's see if 0.9 works no even one millimeter is slightly off so how do we deal with this i'm glad it came up actually because what we can do is now uh, move this out of the way quickly then transform a line we select our object and this face to this face so very easy align tool definitely helps in these situations but as you can see here we have a small issue where this face now is going to that face so what this tells us is that we have to go back and change the direction of our revolve so move rotate we select these sketches and 2.5 degrees was obviously not enough for this gauge of wire whatever this wire is in a sense so instead of 2.5 let's go ahead and go up by five and then sweep so tools sweep next and then like i would have not left this part of the tutorial in because i made the mistake obviously but it's actually useful to know that there is a way to fix these things so click done double click oh now we have to resketch our circle actually so circle here double click align it copy 
rotate by 180 degrees. And then instead of trying to align it, uh, rather align it manually, we can simply leave it there and go to transform align right away since we know it's slightly off, right? So we select our body, click the face we want to align, click this face, click done. And now we see that it's a little bit too high. So we could have met somewhere between 2.5 and 5, maybe 2.8 degrees of a transition. But again, that depends on your project. But just for the sake of this tutorial, let's go ahead and do the same thing. So pattern tool, select these two bodies, make sure you're a linear pattern, and then center align just in case. And then for spacing, that's where the real issue comes in because we're not sure about the spacing, right? So we, we could do... Um, instead of spacing total distance. And we can actually find out that total distance. So again, mistakes do come up in, in the process, but we can fix them because we can find out exactly how much we need. So this face and that face are actually aligned. So the center pieces, you can see they're 3.8349. Because they're on the same plane, they count as the same sketch. So this is one way to figure that out. So 3.8349, that's actually Hard to remember, but 3.8349, it's going 3.8349, I already forgot. Uh, let me write it down real quick because I'm gonna forget. So this is one of those moments where the iPad cannot replace everything. I mean, obviously I can go to notes and write it down, but I had a pen lying around here somewhere and a piece of paper, which comes in handy. So I had, what was it? Uh, 3.8349, and it's important to get that exact number, otherwise it won't be correct, right? So then we go to transform, pattern, we select our body, both of them bodies, and we do now spacing, because we know the spacing, right? And we can go up and do a spacing of 3.8349, 8.349, and now we can see it aligns perfectly, so, now we can go in and add however many details we want. And then if we hide the sketches, we can now extrude our bodies as necessary as well. So to meet the needs of your project. So this is just <laughs> some uh, tips of how you can do it. Again, this is not a perfect uh, kind of revolution, but to show you how it's done because you can adjust it to your project perimeters as needed. So I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions and would like some answers, uh, let me know. I'll try to answer as best I can. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Here at JLake 3 d our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.